Hi everybody, it's Cindy. It is Saturday, June 15th, and I'm back for an update. As you can see, I'm outdoors, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm sitting at my front garden, and I will be giving you a tour later, and you will be hearing the birds in the background. I have some great pieces to share with you, and I'm excited to share those today. Uh, this is a gift for somebody. I've been working on it all week. And I'm going to be giving you details of this piece. Uh, the pattern is by Little House Needleworks and it's called America. And I wanted a patriotic piece. And I finished it last night at 1.30 in the morning. Shout out to DLive Madsen for entertaining me while I was stitching this piece for many, many hours all week long. Now this piece, I had several people reach out to me and say, how long do you stitch and how long does it take you to finish a piece? Well, I never really keep track because I work on different pieces and I switch back and forth. But on this piece, I did keep track. I started it on June 9th and I finished it on June 14th. So it took me six days to stitch and I did count the stitches each day. Now the times, I don't keep track of time because I don't just sit and stitch for like five, six hours straight. I get up, I come out in the garden, I go for walks. I really split it up so I really don't, I could never keep track of the time because I, I just can never do that. So June 9th, the first day I stitched 446 stitches. June 10th, I stitched 902 stitches. June 11th, 659 stitches. June 12th, 830 stitches. June 13th, 716 stitches. And last night, 594 stitches. Now, these might be off a, a little bit. Uh, I was counting around midnight every night. And then, of course, at that time, you're tired. And um, I did my best on trying to keep track. So let's look at this piece. This is done on 28 count Stonehenge by Color and Cotton. And I did personalize the piece. And it says Homegrown USA. And like I said, this is a gift for somebody. So much love, Homegrown. I know you will truly appreciate this piece. And it really came out beautiful. Now, up top, I did change the stars to blue over here. And the Homegrown USA, I actually just kind of tweaked it myself. And the USA part, red, white, and blue, I did it. I did outline the S, and I outlined the little yellow flowers with the blue bird by the house. It is an amazing piece. Let's see if we can get good lighting. I love, love, love this piece. This is going to be hard to depart my hands. <laughs> I will say that. Uh, some pieces are hard to let go of, but it's always better to give than receive. And I know the person getting this will love it. So that was my first piece. And I will most likely be framing that myself. And I really love the piece. I, I might stitch it again. I don't really like stitching peaches twice, but I have stitched pieces many times twice. So we will see. It is a beautiful piece, um, a very enjoyable stitch. The next piece, oh, I just, you have no idea how excited I was. I went to the framer today and I picked up Sunflowers Farm. This is a piece I finished. I, 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 I almost, I was like a little kid in the store. And the lady who showed me was like super excited. She's like, it's beautiful. And this is the frame piece. Now I did change it to Sunflower House because I did make it represent me. The little boy is my son, Chris. Of course, that's me in the upper left-hand corner. Let me get back and see. Now, I'm going to get enclosed. The detail of the frame is beautiful. It actually has hearts on the frame. And I don't, I don't know. I'll definitely be attaching pictures. It, it's sunny outside and <laughs> I, oh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful frame piece. I'm really lucky I have an amazing framer in Knoxville called Bennett Gallery. And 
they do amazing work and I, I was like a little kid today really I was I ran to the store because I knew I could pick it up today and it was super exciting whenever you have a piece framed by someone else other than yourself every now and then it's good to treat yourself to a piece all right so I had them working on this is the book here let me show you the book where I got the alphabets from it's called Dale Burdett and it's a hundred and one alphabets and I just for the USA I picked it from this book so it's good to have something handy like that uh, when you want to personalize it the next piece I've been working on of course is uh, farmers alphabet by the prairie schooler and I stitched all the blocks I know I didn't stitch any letters but I stitched all the blocks and that's, that's actually a lot of stitching so I'm just ready to fill those in I worked on that a little bit and the last piece that I was working on and I finally started I've been wanting to stitch this piece for several years and this is four seasons cross stitch by house mouse designs and I'm stitching him I've wanted to do this piece for so long and I finally pulled it out and I started him and I'm gonna show you what that looks like and you could see this is the seeds actually in the sunflower and I did some back stitching on it so I'm gonna do the back stitching as I go and I love I love working on this piece but I went to work on that other gift uh, so I kind of stopped that and those are the pieces that I have been working on I did want to give a thank you out there um, somebody had reached out to me from Canada looking for a pattern and it was a couple videos back I posted that and it was called my first gray hair and I want to thank you because somebody uh, did have that pattern uh, for her and I know they connected and I think that's awesome that the community stepped up and was able to help somebody find a pattern that pattern was not for me it was for someone else in Canada we got to take care of each other in this community <laughs> so I want to thank you so much I've been really busy uh, with the garden uh, it's awesome and I'm definitely going to be bringing you on a tour uh, it is Saturday here it's sunny out it's not super hot it's been a little bit overcast I did go downtown to market and I love going to market it's all the farmers come in and you could get all kinds of handmade goods and I really try and support uh, the local community here so I'm gonna be bringing you on the tour of the garden and until we meet again everyone I hope you're having a great weekend much love and happy stitching everyone hi everybody we're gonna go on a tour of the garden it is Saturday June 15th and let's go in you can see more of the sunflowers have bloomed and they're beautiful and tall and look at that one over right there that has to be over six feet tall up there um, but we're getting close look at these they're gorgeous now I have seen bubble bumblebees but I haven't seen one honeybee but as you can see let's see if we can see some there's one right now there's a bumblebee and with all the flowers I have seen a lot of bumblebees so I'm happy to see any kind of bee but definitely no honeybees which of course for me is concerning uh, we're gonna go around and these are the other sunflowers they don't get as tall the more uh, like bush and a couple of them just bloomed so let's take a look at these beauties Look at that how pretty oh, they are there's another one and they're all getting ready to bloom soon oh, so they look awesome now this is where I was sitting when I was filming and you could see I have a ton of zinnias tons and I do cut them every week and I get three vases full 
I was going to use every week. And I really have to cut these today. After I film, I'll definitely cut again. Down at the market today, I was able to get uh, some fresh lavender. A farm comes in this time of year and they, they cut fresh lavender and then it'll dry out. And I just put it in a vase. And there's, of course, my bunny rabbit. So we're going to go in and we're going to take a look. And as you can see, look how high the sunflowers are. I mean, that one is as tall as my roof of my house. It, it really is tall. <laughs> And I know once they bloom and they're gone, pulling these things out is always so hard for me because I'm tiny. I'm only 5'2", so we're going to go in. Going to look. There's the bee bomb still. I mean, it really sprouted. That it, In a couple days, I'll probably be cutting that back and it will regrow. But they're beautiful. I haven't seen any hummingbirds this year and no honeybees, which is... It's really... um. That's something I pay attention to. Oh, there's the marigolds. It's starting to get big. Here is more zinnias. Every color. <laughs> They're beautiful. And I really do have to cut them today. Trim them all back. There's the other bee bomb. In the back there, as you can see, uh, all the morning glory is starting to come up and sprout and it's starting to grow up the vine. Still have a couple of roses. And next to that, that is supposed to be a purple sunflower, but we shall see. I'm not sure what they sent me in the mail. You never know. And this is getting ready to bloom. These are little baby, let's see if we can get it, little baby purple flowers. You can see they're, they're pretty. And we're going to go down the left of the garden. Give me one moment. Okay, and this is the rose bush. They're all gone. I trimmed that back. It was it was a monster. I had to trim the rose bush back. Got my deer. Yellow flowers. We have some decorative grass in the back. The azalea. These really blossomed. I mean, there's a ton of these orange and yellow flowers everywhere. They kind of took over. And you could, you could see there's a lot of bumblebees. And these are the first that I've seen uh, all season. But I am happy to see any kind of bees out here. Um, I'd love to see some honeybees. I just haven't seen any yet. And I'm hoping I do get to see some. These the daisies are going to be sprouting again soon. The yellow flowers. I mean, these just exploded. And I do have the purple rose of Sharon. It hasn't bloomed yet. There's a ton of buds on it, though. I'm super excited for when that blooms. Got the hasta. And the hasta did bloom. And these are the red tops. More of those are blooming. Now, last week we had a really big storm. I mean, downpour, like, like torrential. And these flowers, I had to tie on the bottom because they were completely, like, flattened out. So I was able to tie them with some twine and lift them back up. <laughs> and these are all doing well, too. Another hosta. That's getting ready to bloom, too. And back there, these are bachelor buttons. Now, these got pommeled from the storm that we had, but I did... Uh, prop them back up and I'll bring it in closer so you can see what they look like. They're really pretty. Uh, they're perennial, which means they come back every year. Look at them. They're really pretty. Really pretty. And they'll all start blooming soon. They all have buds on them. And I still have some uh, yellow roses there. I'll go down and take a look at the balloon flowers. And everything is really the garden. <laughs> It makes me smile, it really does, and um, I love spending time out here. We're gonna go around to the back garden and take a look at that. In this bed, I did plant one tomato plant and cucumbers, and they're starting to grow now, and I do have to put my stakes out so they could grow on the vine, uh, but they're coming up now. And this is the tomato garden. I've planted three plants. These have really exploded uh, after all the rain that we received last week. They're, they're big and 
lots of flowers on them in there and I'm excited uh, these are planted from seeds I did not buy any of these plants I'm showing you these are all from seeds I do not start them indoor I just plant them outside in the garden so they do grow okay this is where the bird feeders are and as you can see I feed them black oil sunflower seeds and they all fall and by the grace of God I get sunflower plants that I don't even plant it's just from the seeds falling and this brings me so much joy I just love it and I'm gonna bring it in the first one bloomed there it is and they'll all be blooming soon and it's funny when the birds are eating some of them just hang out on the sunflowers and eat it's kind of funny to watch uh, but that's blooming too okay this is the lettuce garden as you can see they're monstrous um, they will they will be bolting soon uh, they are getting seeds and I did leave I wanted to show you what when they go to seed they do seed believe it or not and this is the red leaf lettuce and as you can see all the seeds are in here so I will have seeds from these and I do pull off, I eat lettuce every day, folks, and I didn't even plant half of the garden. I just get so much of it. Um, I'll bring you around so you can see the other one. Here is the other one. This is the, look at it, all the seeds will be coming out of here. The marigolds are getting bigger now. Look at how big the, and tall the, I got my Swiss chard. I've been sauteing this with garlic and oil and eating this a lot tons of it I love it more lettuce the onions are growing really really good over there I'm gonna go around this is the beet garden and the leaves got a little bit beat up this year but the beets are still growing as you can see the marigolds are blooming and I just plant them in the holes and like I said this is supposed to be a purple sunflower so we shall see <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get this is the arugula in a pot. You can plant in pots, people. I planted even more and it's growing. More stuff is growing in the pots. The herb garden, I completely cut back. It was like a, it was so overgrown. The sage is huge. Got the oregano. The oregano was out of control. I had to trim it back. Black eyed Susans will be blossoming soon. I still have all my mints and peppermints and cilantro they're all still growing but i did cut it back quite a bit i did pull the garlic uh, so i do have the garlic drying out now Lori from once upon a stitch your flowers are blooming thank you so much look they're really pretty they're purple now somebody and now i don't know what variety these are she did not know what seeds these were somebody said this might be a lupine uh, if you know what flower this is uh, please leave it in the comments below they're really pretty. It's delicate. I did move it into the front with more shade. The too much sun was too much for this plant. So, Lori, thank you so much. And see, this is just in a pot. Dirt, seed, sun, water. That's it. You can do this. I know that so many people have reached out and said they started a garden. They planted something in a pot. You have no idea how happy that makes me. It really doesn't take a whole lot of work. And as you could see, there's the butterfly bush, and the marigolds are all blooming now. This is in the front garden. Oh, yes, I do love my garden. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Happy stitching, everyone. Now, as you could see here, I'm going to show you one more thing. One second. Let me go down. I am barefoot in the garden. Um, I ground when I do that, and grounding is so good for your health. I'm always barefoot out on the grass or in the garden, and a lot of people don't like putting their foot in the grass or anything. I'm going to link a, leave a link below. If you do want to ground, you can buy grounding mats to sleep on. Um, it is extremely healing for your body. I do not make anything off that. I'm not an affiliated marketer on that. Um, but grounding has helped many people with so many health benefits. And on that note, everyone, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. 
happy stitching.